What's up everybody, this is Master EN Gamer, and we just recently got a brand new PTR update featuring a ton of brand new nerfs and buffs to different heroes, and also a few rather interesting quality of life changes, if you want to call them that. So today, I want to run through all the noteworthy updates we've gotten on this most recent patch, and to start, we have Golden Gun Bob. That's right, Ash's Golden Gun now includes Bob as well, who is fully 100% gold. Well, his clothes aren't technically gold, but his entire body is gold, and I have to say, this looks amazing. I was not expecting Blizzard to actually go through with updating this. Of course, there were plenty of people on the Overwatch forums and the subreddit saying, oh, Bob should be gold too, either at least have the golden arms, golden wrist cannons, or ideally be entirely gold. And it looks like they went the full force and just made his entire body gold, and he looks awesome. Ash players out there, this is by far are gonna be an extra incentive to get her golden guns. Moving on though, we now have two new heroes who can sing karaoke on the Busan City map, and they are Genji and Zenyatta. Let's take a listen to hear what sweet tunes they've got. <laughs> I need singing. Embrace the rhythm. Embrace the beat. Embrace the melody. Move your feet. The rhythm is in you if you search within. Get down into the iris. Float to the beat. Om. Alright, now that we've covered some of these fun little quality of life changes, let's take a look at the hero updates. Some of these we did know were incoming due to different developer interviews and posts, but let's just get into it and talk a little bit about what these changes are going to do. First up, we have Bastion. Configuration Recon, ammo increased from 25 to 35, and Configuration Sentry, weapon spread decreased by up to 33% while firing. Now the first one is pretty simple, just more ammo, he has to reload less often. The second one is a bit more confusing. Essentially what this means is, the longer you spend firing constantly without stopping, the narrower your bullet spread becomes. Essentially, this makes him a bit more viable at targets a bit farther away, because he can be a little bit more accurate when firing at them. Now, unfortunately, overall, I don't think this is really gonna do a whole lot for him. Yeah, it makes him slightly better, but it doesn't really fix the core problem he has, which is just immobility. Overwatch is an incredibly fast-paced game, and heroes like Bastion, unfortunately, just can't keep up with with that. It's rather sad, because I think Bastion is a really, really cool character design, but he's stuck in a game that, well, just isn't really built for him. I don't know, we'll have to see what these changes end up doing, but personally, I'm not going to keep my fingers crossed for him becoming viable anytime soon. Next up, we have Brigitta, Shield Bash, no longer can travel or stun targets through barriers. Now, I already made a video yesterday going quite in depth with my thoughts about this. I do still think it is a good change, and I am absolutely looking forward to seeing what it ends up doing to the game overall. I think this could lead to some rather noteworthy meta comp changes, depending on what people can end up doing with it and figuring out ways to work with and against it. Again, it's something we'll have to wait and see how it plays out, but I am incredibly optimistic and I do quite like this change. Next up, we have Doomfist. Rising uppercut, loss of air control duration lowered to 0.6 seconds from 3 seconds. Basically, when you get punched up into the air, you're not going to be immobile, so to say, for quite as long. Long. You'll be able to regain air control, move, and hopefully not fall off a ledge, or at the very least avoid his hand cannons once he pops you up in the air, which means it's going to be a bit easier to not just die as soon as you get hit with it. Doomfist has been quite an annoying character recently, so I think it's very important that we're getting a change like this to take away a bit of that power that he has and annoyance as well. Also, Seismic Slam maximum range reduced from 20 meters to 15 meters. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. 
Not that big of a distance change, but still overall definitely a nerf to him. Next up, we have a buff to McCree, which is his Peacekeeper alternate fire, damage increased from 45 to 55. So now his fan the hammer does 10 more damage per shot. This is a little scary in all honesty, because it means he's actually going to be dishing out quite a bit more damage, especially if you're hitting a bigger target like a tank. As a tank player personally, that's why I'm a bit wary of this. I don't think it's going to be like, OP or anything. I don't think we're going to see McCree suddenly become the DPS meta king because of this simple change, but it's definitely going to make him a bit more of a threat at closer ranges, which is actually a nice compliment to Ash because I talked about in a previous video how McCree is sort of the closer range version of Ash and Ash is the longer range version of McCree. So I think this even more solidifies this idea of McCree being effective at closer ranges, being able to flashbang someone and then fan the hammer and kill them. Whereas Ash is going to be better if you're trying to pick off a Farah or other targets from longer ranges. I'm not sure this is what Blizzard was intending with this fan the hammer buff, but it does kind of feel like the direction things are going. Going. I'm sure this change will be good in the long run, and we'll definitely be seeing more McCrees getting played because of it, as long as they're not all just defaulting to Ash. So yeah, good for him. McCree players rejoice. Next up, Soldier76 got a very slight nerf. Tactical Visor no longer makes Helix Rockets auto-target enemies. Now, while this is technically a nerf, I guess, the reason they explained for doing this is because the Helix Rockets are projectiles, they have travel time, and therefore auto-focusing on a target and then firing the Helix rockets meant they would usually end up missing anyway if the target was moving, so I kind of understand why they went ahead and removed the auto-focusing for the Helix rockets, and I guess now means he can actually more tactically use the Helix rockets because he can, you know, fire in front of the enemy instead of having them just hit them directly on and therefore miss during his ultimate, which, yeah, I guess that makes sense. A very minor change that, honestly, isn't going to have really any impact on anything if you ask me. And last for the hero change, we have a Torbjorn Molten Core buff, damage increased from 130 to 160 per second. Basically, this just makes his lava pools more deadly and therefore a bigger threat, much more effective at area denial. I think that's probably good because Torbjorn is definitely better now that he's gotten his rework, but he's by no means a super powerful character, far from OP, far from meta. So yeah, good for him, he'll have a bit more viability and perhaps can contribute just a little bit more to the team. Anyways, that'll do it for all the news and updates regarding the latest Overwatch PTR patch. I think the Brigitte nerf is probably the most significant thing, followed by the Doomfist nerf as well. I'm really curious to see how those end up playing out. The other changes seem fairly minor. McCree one, maybe that'll lead to something. We'll have to wait and see. And the Golden Bob, of course, is perhaps the best thing of all. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to leave your thoughts about anything I talked about here today down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to leave a like and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit the bell to keep up with all my future Overwatch news and content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, Golden Bob for the win, and have a great day.